okay. All right, welcome to Live with Prima, everybody. I'm Sharon Lockin, and I'm going to be your hostess today. So, just so I can hide behind this, this is what we're going to make today. And um, it is a watercolor canvas, and I created it for our summer release. So it has a lot of the new summer stuff on there. We used a home decor stencil. It's 8 by 10, but you can see it's adaptable. This is this panel's eight by eight, and our new color bloom two sprays, which we're gonna have fun with, and then it has a bunch of different other mixed media elements in there. Now the medium I applied over the paste is my own concoction. I took some of Finnevere's amazing art basics and mixed them together, and we're gonna go over the pros and cons of doing that. What worked well for me? What didn't work well for me? and hopefully answer your questions and help you recreate this. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna flip the camera around. It will be black for two seconds, just so that you don't get dizzy as I move this around. You don't get seasick. Then we'll refocus. This is my workspace now. Okay, come on camera. Sometimes it just sits here and doesn't wanna behave. It's just like a child, right? All right, so there we go. We got it. I think we can zoom in just a little bit more. Okay, sometimes on camera the color looks a little off. Let me tell you that this is more, um, it's less blue and a little bit more turquoise. But you, it is what it is. You guys know cameras catch colors differently and it's okay. So, um... Tiffany, Tiffany is our mod today. So if you've never been to Live with Prima, when we do it, we're doing it live on Ustream, okay? And we have a channel there, um, Prima Flowers. All of our Ustream shows are held on that channel and you can watch live and you can join in our chat. And we have fabulous Prima people as moderators in the chat. And today we have someone really, really special. Tiffany is in there. She's my mod, and she is. She just said I'm a rock star, but I, to tell you what happened beforehand, I was bragging about her before I started the record. She is on our design team. She is super, super talented. Plus, it's her birthday today, so we have a birthday girl moderator. So we need to wish her happy birthday everywhere. And um, Tiffany, if I drive you crazy. I'm sorry, I don't like to say all the item numbers while I'm teaching because it just takes, it slows the class down, but um, there are lists on our Live with Prima channel and or our Live with Prima group on Facebook. It's It's been all over posted, so we can help you out if you need an item number or a name. Okay, let's get going. Um, what I do want to tell you though is so you don't sneak out early, don't do that. We are going to play with metallic accents at some point in the show. These are brand new. They were not on my project, but I think we're going to go in and add them. Here's a little peek. Beautiful color palette. They are metallic semi-watercolor cakes. They are magic in a box. Let me just say that. Okay? Very cute. And we're going to play around with them. I just got them. They're brand new from Prima. They are just starting to ship to stores, so I got to play with them, and oh my gosh, they're my new love, okay? Isn't that how we crafters are? We we get something, and we're just dying over it. Okay, let's get down to business. So what we're going to do is take a watercolor panel. We're going to work with a home decor stencil. This is a brand new one that just came out this summer. I'm going to just set my finished sample on the side so I can look at it here and there to see what I did. Um... I will try to keep up with the chat if there are questions. And sometimes my phone's gonna buzz. That's just Tiffany texting me. I think she has my number. <laughs> if she doesn't, holler on the chat and I'll try to catch up. Okay, so we have our stencil. And what we're gonna be working on is a panel, a watercolor panel. So I have one right here. I know they're pure white. Isn't that just crazy? Um, If my phone buzzes, it's usually someone telling me there's a question or whatever for the show, okay? Um, so that's how we communicate with each other while we're sitting here teaching live. 
So this is a watercolor panel. These came out in January. They're in multiple sizes. This one is 8 by 10 and you can see it matches this um, decor stencil perfectly. However, the sample I'm going to do for the show is 8 by 8 um, because I like I just like that size better, but for the step out, I thought it would be fun to show you how you, uh, just a different size you could use. Alright, has anyone played with the watercolor panels? Okay, when they came out in January, I they were one of my most favorite products. And you look at it and go, why? It's watercolor paper. And it's wrapped around all the sides. And it's sturdy. You know when you play with a canvas and you put a stencil on or you stamp and it goes in? Hang on, I got one right here. Okay? This is a, a high quality 11 by 14, but it pushes in. Can you hear that? It pushes in. So when you're doing stamping or you're doing stencil work, sorry, I just threw that on the floor. <laughs> It gives in the middle, and sometimes you blur your stamping or you miss spots with your um, stencil and your paste and stuff. This does not do that. It doesn't give very much at all because it's paper and it's really nice quality. Okay, so I'm going to just, this is the 8 by 10 and that number is um, 585679. Tiff wouldn't have that because it wasn't in my list. I'm just going to demo on this. Okay, so I have my panel. I'm going to put my stencil on top. And now we're going to make our magic. So we're going to just set this aside and we're going to go whip up something special. Alright, when I'm mixing paste and stuff, I try to just reuse packaging for that. Stuff you would throw out anyway. And I mix it up on here. And honestly, if I want to save it, I can seal it back up and kind of pinch the air out and it stays wet for at least a day. So I'm really reusing it then. What I want to take out is the light paste and 3D gloss gel. Now what I'm trying to do is create a resist effect on my um, project so that it's not soaking in all of the colors. So can you see that? The white background is the pattern from the stencil that stayed basically it stayed white I had areas where it wasn't as effective but I'll tell you why when I first did this I only used 3d gloss gel because I thought the paper was white so it would stay white and um, I love this gloss gel it is so cool it dries clear and um, I'm going to mix up a little bit more than what I really need, okay? You can actually do about half of that for an 8x8 stencil. So a tablespoon or two. Um, so I only used this originally and it lets the Color Bloom 2 spray color it a bit, okay? Um, I don't even know how to explain it, but it dries clear and these Color Bloom 2 sprays I keep talking about them. Let me show you it. They color really well. There's a lot of pigment in there. So they're going to get into that gel and actually color it a bit. Well, I didn't want that. I wanted it to be white. So I'm going back to my handy dandy, very trusty light paste. I have a love affair with this. Regular paste is like um, chewing gum. And light paste is like marshmallow cream. If, if you can sense a difference in the um, density is the word I'm trying to think of. Sometimes you're sitting here working and you don't actually come up with the words you want. Um, they, they both work really well for this little mixture, either regular paste or light paste. Um, I just like light paste. I think it weighs less. I think it dries a little bit faster and I really like marshmallow cream way more than than chewing gum so but I heard Finn describe the difference in the pace like that and I thought that was brilliant it really helps us understand what that there is a difference so most of the time I whip out the light pace so what I did now the first time I did this I did half and half 
well, the first time I, I did 100% of this. And then the next time I tried it, I did half and half. Um, let me show you. So this is the half and half, and I, I didn't finish it. I was just testing it on the back of my panel, which is what I would suggest for you guys. When you're first starting out any technique like this, use the back of your panels. I play with them all the time. I figure out what colors I want on there. I test different things. So as you can see, parts of it stayed pure white, but when I used the darkest color, it did soak in a little. So then I'm, what I did is I changed my formula. So I want a little bit more paste and a little bit less gel. And I think I actually just did half and half. Just to be safe, let's put another little scoop in here. I can reuse this formula um, and do more projects with it if I have too much, which I will, because this is way more than what you need. So the whiter you want it, um, I do maybe 60-40 with the paste and the gel. 60 of the paste, 40 of the gel. Can you just use paste? No. It doesn't work. For some reason, you need a bit of the gloss, and this whitens it. So, I don't think my formula is perfect yet, so if anyone else plays around with this and figures out the perfect masking um, formula, like, message me, because I need to know. Okay? Alright, so we have this mixed up just on a piece of plastic I was throwing away. And we're going to bring back this stencil. Now, I want to show you a little trick before I do the main piece. On my original one, the stencil was too long. So I actually flipped it to the side and I, I did put this top first. I wanted my design to wrap around, and that's why I love these watercolor panels. So it's a little bit harder. As long as you don't, you, you're not a perfectionist, this will work for you. And I'll show you. You would just take the part of the design that didn't fit on the 8x8, which was basically a little, about an inch, and get it in here. And you know, it fits, this design fits on the 8x10. So I'm just showing you this for demo purposes. This is the hardest part because you're going to kind of have to hold it down and smear it in there at the same time. It's messier. Can you catch that? You know what? I put my autofocus off. Let me just redo that real quickly. Put the focus on. There we go. So you get a really cool texture pattern on the side and all you have to do is swipe those little pieces off. Do one side, do the front, let it all dry because to do the other sides you're going to have to rest this and flip it and you don't want to smear that till it's totally dry. But isn't that cool? Look at that texture. And you know what? You may mess up. I have a little bit of smearing right here. You could go in with a toothpick and get that out. But I think it's just cool and fun. So I'm going to leave it. Alright. So what you want to do is do like the top and then we'll go down and do the main part. I just have to wipe off, um, you know the camera never wants to focus when when it's on, on white like that, so I just have to apologize. I'm wiping off the back of my stencil. There was a little bit of that paste gel on there and I don't want it to go where it's not supposed to go on the main part of the design. All right. So here we go, we have it on here, and you know this part's easy, right? This part, everybody knows how to do, it's really fun. So what I'm going to do is basically hold it in the middle. And it's a home decor design, it's, so it, it's a bigger design, but it has pieces like the butterfly that come up. So pay attention to that when you're applying your paste, you don't want the paste to go under that. So to prevent that, I'm going to go out, spread it out. You still may get a little bit that goes under some of these. I mean, we all practice, right? We've all messed up. I don't think it's a big deal because we're going to be adding embellishments and um, the paste does stay wet for a bit. So you can go in there and touch it up if you want with a toothpick or a paintbrush and remove some of that. I even use my fingernails sometimes. 
So basically I'm working and doing like a radius out so that I'm never really wiping it towards the middle because I'll catch some of those designs. So look at your stencil when you're before you do your paste. Make sure you understand where the if there are some intricate pieces that might fold back. Just pay attention to that. So I'm trying not to move my stencil. Trying to work around the whole outside design first. I think I got it pretty well. You don't need to scrape it super clean, but you can if you want. Now the middle is definitely going to show. I want this to be perfect. So bugging that butterfly right there. So this one I'm going to be extra careful on. Make sure I get a lot of this special medium we just concocted. And I'm not going to I probably won't scrape it off as clean because I don't want any marks on the actual letters. I think that's good. Now here's another trick. Sometimes I've pulled it up and it didn't, I missed a part and I can't lay it back down because I didn't keep my placing. So on this one I'm slowly moving my fingers. It looked perfect and then I whipped it up just like that. And what you would do at this point is go wash this <laughs> because um, it will dry before your class is done. So what I do is I roll it in some wet wipes or paper towel and keep it moist until my class is done. And then I go wash it. Um, they clean up pretty well. Paste comes off really well. Gel, on the other hand, is a little bit harder to get off once it dries. So I'm just... Give me two seconds to get some wet wipes just to keep this stencil moist um, while I finish the class. Normally I run it and clean it up right away. Okay, so I rolled it in wet wipes and I put it in a towel. It should be okay. We're going to then um, clean our little guy off right here. And we would then just set this aside to air dry. You do not want to use a heat gun. And um, it can bubble it. So if you are um, using a heat gun because you want to hurry up, try not to. Try to let it air dry. Just set it aside. And um, if you're doing the sides, when you set it aside, it's going to take a little bit longer because you do one part and then you do this. Let those dry and then do your other sides. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside right now. Remind me not to step in it, okay? <laughs> so I've folded this up on itself because I made extra. And all I would do then is use this up in a day or two. A basic, And there you go. And if you don't use it up, you can toss it like it is. There. And it's a lot less waste, okay? We pay enough for... Art mediums, we don't want to be wasting a bunch if we mixed up too much. Okay, we are ready to go. So, you know, I already prepped one for this show, um, and it's all dry. It's been air drying, and I know this is all white on white. Sometimes the camera really dislikes that. Let me throw this back in here. Um, do you guys have any questions on that? No? Good. We're going to get some paper towel out. We're really going to be white on white, so if the camera's a little finicky right now, it'll calm down once we get these sprays out here. Let's just get these out, and then maybe it will behave itself. So um, we're going to explore the Color Bloom sprays right now. Now, I've already done the pattern on the sides. Can you see that? So when I said, like, I did the main pattern and then I flipped that stencil up and this this is the hardest part because it's hard to to do that on a little surface like that the main parts um, pretty decent I have a little bit of smudging right here in the butterfly I'm not really worried about that and then I did a little bit on the bottom so my design would wrap all the way around I thought that was really cool alright so what we're gonna do is start with our lightest colors now here we go. Is that focused? For the lightest colors, I went back to the original color blooms. 
um, I'm using glistening waves for a little bit and what I'm going to do is mainly color I have paper towel flying all over because the air is on and it's like blowing my whole table here um, my panel has mainly all of it is colored and I would always start with the light ones first now this is glistening waves and um, it's been refilled twice so I always mark my bottle when I refill it it's so it's going to be lighter than normal does that make sense because I've already added what when it gets down to about there I add water and fill it back up so every time I do that I mark it um, so it gets lighter each time but I like that I love this softer um, color that I'm getting now if you want to go in and blend this all out you could do that with a water brush I need to clean mine I was playing around with the metallic accents um, make sure it's blended in if you want I'm not really worried about that right now because we're gonna be adding even more colors the important thing to do is when you are adding a lot of colors try to dry it between a few of them okay um, otherwise it, it starts to blend together and get kind of yucky looking. So the next one I'm using is Soft Teal. And I am going to try and keep these corners lighter. But you can see that this really added some fun color in there. It really looks like um, I got a lot right here. That's okay. Just blend it in. What I'm trying to avoid are the dots, like the little spray dots. So I don't want those spattered on here yet. Okay, so I have soft teal. You, Summer Sky is another really cute one to use with this. So what I'm going to do right now is just zap it a little bit. Um, I don't want to bubble the paste that's already dried. I just want to dry this just a tad bit. Do any of you um, have the Color Bloom 2 sprays already? They are a limited edition, so when they are gone, they really are gone. I'm trying to find my wet wipes. This is not going to show as much right now. I'm just going to tap the raised pattern, and it's going to pull off any blue that's on, on that. See that? So I would do that between each color or maybe every two colors just to keep the paste um, that we did um, white. I didn't realize I just sprayed all my sprays with the other colors. <laughs> that your whole table ends up being sprayed. All right, next we're going to get into the Color Bloom sprays. So the Color Bloom 2. We're going to start with Berry Pond. And these are so cool. These are a little bit different than our original. The nozzle's been changed, and um, they come with just powder. Let me show you. So they're very lightweight. There's no liquid in here. It's just powder, and then you just put tap water and shake it up. I love it. There's a little tab up here you would pull off. It stops it from spraying when you're shipping or you're bringing it to a crop or something. I hang on to those because if I am taking my sprays with me, I don't want the nozzle squeezing in my luggage. Okay, so Fairy Pond, what we're going to do now is instead of spraying directly on the canvas, well, you could do that. I'm just going to pull out a palette and spray some in here. Make sure you shake it up or you won't get the glimmer. We're also going to do Dragonfly Blue. My palette's well loved and I never clean it out. So sometimes I get mystery colors. So we're going to just start with these two. Come in with a water brush. Now this was kind of dry and what I'm doing, it, it, sound, it sounds like it doesn't make sense. I'm going to just throw a bit of water in here and then bring my color in. The reason is um, 
it's like creating a slick surface on a road so the oil spreads better. <laughs> it really lets you move that color the way you want it to. So I know it was dry. That just kind of sets the color previously. And what I'm doing is I'm creating more dark here and in the lower left. So we're going to just build colors. I forgot to wet this one first, so I'm like squeezing water out of my water brush furiously. And yeah, the embellishments go here too, um, but that's okay. Bring some of that. I mean, you're really just playing right now. So I have um, Fairy Pond, and some parts are wetter than others, and I think it's kind of fun to let them kind of run a bit. But before they dry, I want to get in here with the Dragonfly. I'm not really sure how much I want right now, so I'm doing little dabbles. And I love it when it runs. I think it creates a, a very pretty watercolor effect. I'm kind of doing it in a circle so that I don't get it everywhere. You, I mean, if you like drips down your page, go ahead and do that. I kind of want it to float around in these two corners. Why? I just wanted two corners darker than the other two. That's it. Now this one's a lot more bold, so if you get in and you don't like that, squeeze some waters. I don't really want water brush, like brush marks. I want it to look more natural. I, I, I'm okay with it coming down the side right here. I might like force some of it down, but make sure you're blending that um, if you don't like that drip mark because it will, these sides have only been sprayed lightly, so I try to blend that in just a bit if I'm working on that edge. Same over here. Only if you're a perfectionist. Okay, so here we go. We got these two colors added now, and I'm going to zap this just for a second. Don't bubble your paste. That's really, really important. You can see this moving the liquids around right here. I love that. It's going to just add a very genuine, like, watercolor look, flow. I don't want it super dry, just not, it was really sopping wet, so. Let's just dry it a little tiny bit, and then we're going to go in here and get Precious Stone, which I may have already sprayed right there. Let me test that. I think that is. Well, Precious, or Magic Stone, start, sorry. Magic Stone is really dark. Look at that. It is dark, dark, dark. But it's super cool, so I'm just going to put a bit on right now. I know I kind of want it in this area. And then what we'll do is go back and touch that up and um, once we have our accents on and see if that was where we really, really wanted it, if we got enough on. So I picked up a tab with my pen and then I'm squeezing water out as I apply it so you don't actually get any brush marks. It looks like it's much more natural this way. So let's scroll that way. I really had fun with this, just letting it float around. And I really do try to keep it in a circle so that um, it pools together beautifully. Okay, I kind of like that. So we're going to dry it one more time, and then we're going to put embellishments on. And then we'll see if we need to touch up any of the areas. So Tiffany's saying that she also put the item number for Precious Stone, and I want to show that. 
precious stone is uh, one of our original colors and i also used that on here i did it just with a paintbrush though i didn't spray it on and it has beautiful mica accent colors so precious stone and the magic stone are two that you have got to get i'm not sure i like like I didn't draw the color and blend it very well in the corners. I'm okay with that right now, personally. We'll touch that up at the end. Now, I was telling you the watercolor panel was one of my favorite items from um, January's release. You see how that's coming off of that resist? I think I bubbled my paste in one spot, but that's okay. We'll, we'll live with it. We'll, we may cover that up right on my butterfly, of course. So what I've done is tapped off the color from the paste, most of it. I will tell you the darker colors, they seep in. It seems like no matter what formula I use, they do come in and get into, um, let me just zoom in on the believe in yourself. See how they're in there and they've colored it just a bit? It's not pure white, not like up here, okay. Make sure we're in focus. There we go. Okay, so um, thank you, Tiff. I think I did use both of them because I have them both out here. Precious Stone and Magic Stone. These are amazing colors. All right, what we're going to do now is just embellish. Um, we're going to put some clusters in both corners, and then we're going to come back in with a paintbrush and add those the darker tones. I think that's um, the best way to do it. So I have some weave trim here and I love, love, love this. Um, we're going to use a couple of these in each corner. So I told you if you have a mistake, just strategically place your ribbon <laughs> and you will cover it up. I think I have four. Let's, let's start with four. Isn't that fun? There are multiple designs of this, and I just love it. It's one of my favorite um, products, which is why I use it all the time on this. The other thing we want to pull out are our box flowers, and um, this one has the rose gold, I believe. It's 586737. This is a brand new box, as I've used all mine up. So ignore me while I pull it apart. So you get this box flower box don't throw this away this works beautifully with our rub-ons and foils to create transparency type like butterflies and flowers so i always save my stiffer plastic so what we want to do on this one is pull out like the biggest one you can find he's going to go down there or she and then we want maybe some of these rosebuds okay let's do one, two, at least three of the smaller rose, but they're very textured um, and full. And that's why I think they're perfect for a home decor project like this. We'll just keep this box on the side. I mean, you get the cutest flowers ever. So I know I want this one as my main focal point. I think I have one more, and I think I have two little ones up here. And this trim went more like this. But I also used a second box flower. Now this one is just pure white. I think it's called Purity too. Five, eight, six, 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 nine. I tell you, they make those numbers way too small for some of us. I can barely read it. We want to pull out some of these just so we get um, a variety in here. So let's put this one up here. I have one more. I like pulling out the different shapes. Let's do this one. Okay. So what I'm doing is just kind of doing a dry set. So I see where everything is and can kind of fill in if I feel like it doesn't look good. I know I have more space right here. That's okay. And then up here we want some of these are going to be tucked in under this flower. I think this will work just like that. So this is kind of how it's going to be set. 
and what I'm going to do is start gluing. For this kind of stuff, I, my canvas is still a bit, or the watercolor panel is still a bit wet. I would use Fabri-Tac. This stuff is beautiful on fabric. It's great on paper. And if your project happens to be wet, it will also be great on that. <laughs> it stays flexible because it's made for fabric. That's why I love it. Um, if your projects are handled at all or they go in luggage and they're sent to shows or whatever, this stuff hardly ever lets your projects pop off or your products pop off your projects. So I'm basically just putting a little dab on the centers of the flowers and the trim. It does stay, um, it's movable for a bit. Make sure I get enough of that sticking out. And then this little guy, I'm thinking right here, but I want to wait to glue him down right now. I got to get my metal elements added. So I basically use Fabri-Tac for everything. However, I gotta give a shout out. We got these new planner glue pens and they demoed them in house on Facebook Live last week and they had glued metal and different things to paper and it with the glue pen and it stuck. So they're my new love. So I I, I go between those and, and the fabric tack. If it's wet though, I'm gonna use the fabric tack. My can't my panel's kind of still wet. But you gotta try out those planner glue pens. They're hilariously amazing. I thought, oh, they'll hold paper and that's it. No, no, they're like Superman glue. So it, go look at our Facebook Live from last week where um, Frank was showing some of the new items and he has the glue pen pens in there and they're just funny. Okay. Um, so we got most of this down. We're going to grab some metals. And this is what I love about these home decor things. You can basically put in little doodads here and there. So I decided to throw in like a metal on this side and a metal on this side. And that's why I was waiting with this flower because I'm not really sure where I want it. I think I'm going to put this up a little higher and put my flower in right here. That'll work. I think the metal adds a really, really nice element. Isn't that beautiful? It's IOD. It's by IOD, and they made these metallic accents in tons of different shapes. And what I do is if I open a package, I keep the others like in a little basket here. And um, I throw them on my projects here and there when I want a really fun texture or just oops went flying out of my hands these there's just nothing else like this that you could add to your project to make it look this cool before those are totally dry though I want to tuck some leaves in which I probably should have done first um, let me tuck them in and then I'll tell you what what they are so basically I'm sliding them under the metal because the metal already has glue on it and I know it's going to hold it. So they're just tucked in here. Kind of like that. Does that look okay? I think this side's pretty good. And then I have a couple up here as well. I might add glue on this one. Just dab it on the tip and then you can lift up and like slide it in where you want it. This one I want on top of the metal. So we get a little bit more dimension. And I think I need one more. He's going to go under the metal. See, I really should have done my leaves first. So when you go to do this, but look, it's, it's still wet. It's still movable. So I want two leaves on this side and at least two here. I might do a third one. So this one's already sitting in the dye. These are our leaf dyes. I run it through with watercolor paper. I love the Bloom Girl watercolor paper. I ran a brush over to get all those little pieces out and then you just pop it out like this. Alright, super, super easy. Now intricate dyes can be a headache for some people. See, I'm thinking I need one more right there. 
that's not on my original but this sometimes flowers and how you space things they're just a little bit different every time and I think that looks better like that what do you guys think yes okay we're gonna let this stuff dry just a bit and I'm gonna just tell you real quickly about the leaf dies and if you don't do die cutting um, this is really Im good information if you do die cutting you can just ignore this so we have different leaves and I run them through sorry about that my phone is ringing okay so we got the phone shut off Sorry about that little um, noise. Um, so we have the purple leaf dies. I have a couple sets. You get one of each kind. There's like five different kinds. I ran it through with the Bloom Girl watercolor paper pad. And here's my trick. I use the Sizzix Precision Base Plate. This made die cutting so much easier for me. You know, all the... Um, die cutting machines and all the dies and all the papers are different thicknesses so you had to play around and shim it up this one's perfect it has a base here that pushes in as much as is needed so that you get really clean cuts with one pass don't buy the knockoff get the scissors someone learned that by um, experience okay so if you have any questions on that just holler but they're Prima leaf dyes, Prima watercolor paper, and we're just running them through, and, and they're nice and white, so they're ready to be colored. So we have those on here, and now what we're going to do is go back in and start playing with the color blooms. So I'm just going to spray some more. That's Fairy Pond, the Dragonfly, which I don't remember which well I had it in now, so we'll put some there. Let's get some precious stone too. I think all my wells are used. And I know I want some sugar plum. Did I use this one? We'll clean that out a bit. Okay. Now what we're going to do is just go in here and have some fun with the different elements. We'll go ahead and use a water brush. Let me get one that has water in it. And I'm going to just go in here and and start adding some color on these elements. You see how this is? And we want to turn it into that. Okay? And that's where you start building up your different colors. So let's go ahead and start with the lightest blue. And I will tell you, I'm just randomly doing this. I don't know that there's a method to this, except do not totally color all the flower or all the leaves. It actually looks better when you leave a bit of white. I think I'm going off camera here. Let's turn this around for you. So let's start with the lightest color. And this is just going to blend it into what you already got done. Don't be afraid to put water on this. That's where I think the um, panel really exceeded my expectations was with how much it could handle the water. See? What did I do? Oh, there's Dragonfly. So as I get darker, I may use a little bit less of those colors. I don't think you need a ton, obviously, or it'd be really dark if I used a lot of that color. Um, I'm going to just tap some of this off right here and see how it's going. I think I need to blend these colors in a bit, just right here. I won't go all the way to the corner, but I want to make sure I get some of these colors blended together. Same thing, I'm picking up a little bit of both of those turquoises and kind of bringing them down here. And that's where you're really using your water to make this glide and blend together. I might need a little bit more of that color. Isn't that a pretty color? The dragonfly? Love, love, love it. And we'll do some spatters with that too. I'm just randomly adding it in here. 
a little drama around some of this. And don't forget your sides. You always want to make sure your sides are done too. And they, you know, depending on your personality, if you're a perfectionist, go in there and do them last if you want so you can get a really clean look. But I kind of want mine random. And again, I'm using a lot of water from my water brush just to make that surface slick. And then it really blends well when you do that. Okay, next color. What was this one? Oh, there's the dragonfly. I was wondering, like, I thought I put that in one of the wells. Okay, well, we're going to move along. So we're going to go into this one next. And I forget which one, if that was the precious stone or the magic stone. But now this one we want to use even more sparingly. So we're just going to, because it's dark, put a bit in. Some of this paper surface and the canvas is already wet. It's blending really nicely already. I know I'm just dabbing and sometimes that will leave little dab marks, but I think we're doing okay. Put it in how you like it. If you think it's not blending well, go in and add some water. I'm basically just catching some of the elements we added. I haven't really done much with the flowers yet. I like the contrast. I want those to kind of stay um, more white than not. And then I did have another stone color, didn't I? Or did I use that? Well, just to make sure we did both of them, let's try it again. So what I'm going to do now is pick up some of that and maybe splash just a bit. See how that's already coming together and you're getting a bit of contrast? I think the splashes are really important. I just wouldn't overdo them. Alright, I like that, but I think I want a little bit of this dark color really lightened and I'm going to touch the edges of my flowers. And I think this kind of pulls in that metal look makes it look, did I glue that down? Yes, I did. So I'm, the brush is just barely catching the tips of the petals. Same even on this one. We want just a little bit of dark in there. So it's very thin down. It was either magic stone or precious stone. They, they both will do the same thing. That one's a little too dark. So what I would do is just go in there with the water, get it wet, and then you can always sop it up with a paper towel. I kind of like that contrast in there. So it takes your flowers and it's just really adding layers of um, color and texture. I think I like that. If you did get too much on, you can squeeze some water, take a paper towel, and dab it off. Um, and that should work. I don't know if I actually glued these on very well. They, it was probably because it was wet. But Okay, so we got that one. And what we want to do is get a little bit of the purple in now. So we're going to go in here. Everything dries a tad lighter than what you see. So if you're not liking it, it's too dark. Just remember that. I got a lot of purple right there. Do you guys like that? Do you like that much purple? My original, didn't. the purple wasn't as defined, I don't think. But I'm thinking I like it more. I do. I think I like that a lot more. So this is Color Bloom 2. These are the limited edition colors. And seriously, grab the ones you know you got to have. I think there are 14. Um, but they, when they're gone, they're gone. So 
Don't do that to yourselves. I get so mad at myself sometimes when I wait and then something sells out. And that happens for me too, even though I should have connections at Prima, right? Ask the design team, we all deal with that. Like stuff that's really popular goes really fast and then we're like, wait a minute, I didn't get it. So what I would do is then go in with the purple and the grays and make sure you get your sides done and make it all pretty and blending together. Um, let me see if I can get that camera to focus better on the, this part. So I'm up here and I'm just grabbing a bit of the wet water down. I don't want to leave brush marks. So make sure if you pre prep the surface with a bit of water, you can go in here and this blend, see how that blended much better? Yeah, that's a lot. So if you don't want that much, dab it off, get some more water, hit a blend out. It'd be good. All right. I got one more side to do and then we're going to dry it. Okay, so here's one of the things I first noticed when I poured on wet mediums on my first camp watercolor panel that I ever did, where the glue was, I saw a bit of buckling and it really worried me. This is gonna dry flat. It, it will, I've already buckled and thrown a ton of water at my original one and look at this, they, they dry. They dry really well, sorry about that light. So it, it will it didn't buckle at all. Um, so Tiffany has asked if I can show the shimmer. Is that on the color bloom sprays? I will be honest with color bloom sprays. When you're working with watercolor um, paper, the shimmer does not show as much until it's totally dry. It doesn't show as much as like when you're spraying flowers and stuff. Is that what you meant? Or do you want to see the metallic accents? Those are coming up. Okay, um, let's add some more splatters and we just have one more thing to put on this. And you know what? I don't know, if you want to protect your flowers like you don't want a ton of spatters on them, just throw a little piece of paper over them. But I think I do want some of those. Ooh, that one got a lot. Did you see that? But that's fun. It, it really puts some contrast in to the project. So um, I'm trying to figure out if Tiffany's asking if we can show the shimmer better. Um, I don't know if the camera's actually going to catch it. You can kind of see it shimmering here. It's not really dry yet either, and that's part of the problem. It shimmers a lot more when it's actually dry because there is a lot of shimmer in the bottom of that. Do you see that? Okay. All right, so the last thing we want to do is just zap this real quickly. We're going to get the heavy body gel out and some glass beads. We'll just pretend that's dry. Okay, so she said the shimmer of the sprays, and I think the best way to do that, it, like I said, on watercolor paper, it doesn't work or show very well on camera until it's totally dried. Um, so let, let's see if you can see it on this one. So I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that shimmery stuff up. You know how cameras can be sometimes. Can you see any of the glimmer? Like right here is really glimmery from the sprays. I don't know if you can catch that. Um, but they are very shimmery. They're like our other color bloom sprays. So what we're doing with this one, this is the heavy duty gel. It will hold anything. What we're going to do is apply that to certain pieces and then sprinkle the glass beads on top and 
The glass beads are zinc, so they're like a purple black. They're really cool. See those babies? Yeah. Um, I'm going to take a, I kind of keep one or two brushes for my gels because gel can ruin a paintbrush. So just, just um, be aware of that, okay? Um, so I want to just kind of put beads around here. So that's kind of where my, you know what, I may not want the heavy duty gel. You see how thick that is? Oh my gosh. We may just use the gloss gel. That This is really, really thick. Whatever you glue with this is not coming off. So I think I'm just going to, I may just wet it down a little. It's going to be the same as the gloss gel. Let's just apply a bit here. I've seen Finn use this and literally you could probably glue a tire down with this stuff. It's so heavy duty. Let's see if we got enough on. Just sprinkle the beads on myself. I don't want clusters. Kind of control where they're going to go. So this is just going for a touch of texture here and there. And this, I love this part because you control where you want those beads to go. Don't put gel if you don't want it there. Let's let them run down just a little bit. And if you get too many, knock it off. I don't really want that many down there. I like that. But I think I need some there. Once those dry on, they're not going to come off because you use such a thick, thick gel. So I'm just knocking a couple off. I think I had too much. And then we're going to do the same thing here. I'm basically just doing a little circle around the um, cluster. So once this dries, it will all be, the paper will all be flat. Trust me on that. It really... It really does flatten out. It scared me the first time, but I've played with these panels enough, and Tiffany can attest to that too, um, unless you really, really, really abuse it. It's, it, it's going to dry nice. So I think these darker beads really pull out the purple and the, the precious stone look, which I loved. I started this um, panel thinking I was going to do really light colors and went up to adding these darker tones, which I think um, just made it look better in the end. So I'm drawing. You know, I drew some of these down. On this side, I'm going to go the opposite direction. I'm really sorry. Everybody's calling me today. Okay, I have beads all over. I'm going to tap them. I don't want it, I want it to kind of look scattered like they slowly sprinkled up there and they slowly sprinkled down here. So do you think I did that okay? Um, so that was the heavy duty gel. You could also use the gloss gel. That will work too. All right, so either one of these will work. It for glass beads or glitter or the micro beads they hold them all on just brush it on where you want the beads and then um, sprinkle your beads on top so the last thing I have to do is add my bird and this was called free bird so I have one right here um, so these birds are they're metal trinkets um, 584917. I love these. I think they're just perfect. And I think I'm going to have them flying off the page. Let me see if my um, focus is working. So I'm just going to put a big dab of glue. And you know what? I'm going to pop him up a little bit so he has more dimension. And that's easy to do by just popping some foam squares on the back. Um, and yeah, it's going to be hanging on my wall. So even though I have foam squares, I'm going to put a lot of Fabri-Tac on here too. So I really put a lot on there and then he's, 
kind of pop up here. I don't know where I want them. The other canvas used a different bird. Yeah, let's get him so he's just slightly, he won't stay up for me. I may need another foam square right here. Oh, he got stuck to a couple of those beads, and I bet he was rolling a bit from those. There we go. All right, that is the whole canvas. Believe in yourself. It's called Free Bird. And, of course, every time you go to do something, it's never going to be exact. But we're pretty close. Here's the bird on the other one. There are, I think, five birds that come on that. So... I think the resist worked better with this one than on this, um, but you you just have fun with it. Play around with the different formulas, see which one you like best. What I am going to do is come in here now and do some metallic accents. So I told you we would play with these if we had some time. So I do realize if you need to go, it's 3 o'clock, but... Um, if not, we're going to get in here and add some metallic accents to our original one. So these are um, metallic semi-watercolor cakes. I had to get the official name or description off of that. Okay. And I have some samples. So this is a cupcake that was colored. And it's all over that um, resin. Hang on, let me get the focus up so it can do it up close. There's, I hope it can catch the shimmer on the cupcake. It's really cute. Like I used the white in the champagne on the frosting and the pink on the bottom. But I also thinned out some yellow and pink. Let's see if we can catch it right there. That is the pearly shimmer that you get with the metallic accent. So I watercolored first and then added that on top. Um, I also added some onto the flower. It's so hard sometimes to catch shimmer on a camera, so I apologize for that. And then I have this little one. Um, so here's another resin colored. Totally just with metallic accents. And I did the same thing. I watercolored, but then I went in and added some shimmer with the metallic accents. So what can you use these on? They work really well on paper. For this one, I just did um, the mint. I wonder if I can get really close on that. Come on. Okay. The camera doesn't want to pick it up. The mint is very pearlized. But here are some leaves that I did. Remember those leaf dyes we used? This is just one of the other shapes. Just painted with leaves, and that's it. And they're shimmery and, and cute. You can also paint resins. Let me grab a resin. And I'll just show you. So I have some owls right here. They come all white. And we'll go in here and just paint him, her, him. What do you guys think? Hey, Heather. Oh, the metallic accents, you guys. I am in love with it. So what color do we want, Mr. Owl? I gravitate towards these and these all the time. But I did my doggy with, like, the upper row. My cupcake was kind of these three right here. Okay, I'm going with blue. We'll just do it. So my first layer, I want thinned out a bit. Trying to get it into the crevices, so get it in there. Now I want to go back in and really work that and get a creamy, creamy layer. It's going to get darker every time. Not sure I want that all over the whole thing. I kind of like some of the white to show off. Show, So you could go in and bounce off some of the highlights. This is so creamy, though. It does provide really nice coverage, and that's what I think is so impressive. So let me grab a different brush and maybe come in here with this. Really, It's like a golden copper. Yeah, just a couple. 
couple highlights here and there and get some different colors going. Okay, we're going to let him dry and then paint a little bit on some other things. But you can see it's not shimmery yet. Wait till it dries. It will be very pearlized. It's just super cool. All right, so I have some leaves. I was just saying you can totally color these. They're so easy. I know you can spray these, but this is just such a fun medium. It's going to be very glimmery like a fall leaf is, and it's just super cool. It has a metallic look to it. You know what else you can color? So we've done a resin and we've done paper. I need to find it. Oh, these little metal pieces. Yes, it colors metal. Let me see, where are my other metals? The metallics dry almost true to color, um, just slightly lighter. Um, so this was a Thin of Air butterfly, which I cannot find my other butterflies right now. You know I have so much on my table. Oh, I got them. They're over here. I want to show you the original and then what I put on it and what it looks like now. So they come in multiple finishes, and we'll color one. Let's do the silver one so that you can see the biggest change with that. Um, and I, what I'm going to do is go in, we'll just go in and do like a bluish purple. I already got blue on here, but let's not waste that. Can you guys see this okay? Sometimes. I'm not sure the camera is going to pick it up or it it is not a total coverage like you would get like with acrylic paint but it's not sheer like watercolor either it's like in between those two so with metal I would paint it I would not touch it until it dries how adorable see how that covers it I just loved that it had such great coverage and then when you dry it okay so let me just set this one down this one's dry already it does not rub off so how fun is that it's totally a brand new medium for you guys to color and play around with yes we must have that right so we have our little owl so that was a resin um, metal, a couple metals, here's another resin, paper of course, well that one's upside down, let's get that right side up, and somewhere I lost my copper leaf I painted, but you can see the metallic accents are so cool, they work beautifully. Now you can also go in and just add accents here and there. And that is what we're going to do right now. I kind of have a whole mess on my table, so <laughs> ignore that. Okay, but I could come in here and put a little shimmer um, here and there on anything I want right now. I'm being way too um, careful. I need to just go in here and do it. And what this is going to do is add a beautiful shimmery pearlized touch. Oh, please pick up the shimmer because it's so pretty. Is it catching it right there? You can kind of see it pearlized. Yeah. yeah. Trust me. You know how some things don't translate well to photos and stuff? These are must-haves. They are so beautiful. And what I love is you control how much or how little you put on, how thick or thin the coverage is, just by um, your use of water with it. So I actually want to thin this out a bit because I want it to run in and blend well with the other pieces that were already done. And I think my little bird needs some. So can you imagine on a watercoloring page you could totally come in here and just add shimmery highlights on the hair or the flowers or anything like that. 
So it's not blended yet, but watch this. Once I get that water on there, this stuff is magical. It's going to be more shimmery on, I would say, resins and paper than on other products. So keep that in mind that some products just soak in the, um, the shimmer. You know that from working with sprays. Like a watercolor paper and wood sometimes is not as shimmery as like flowers can be. And Can you guys catch that shimmer showing up there? I can see it. I'm um, just not sure the camera can catch it. The pearlized look. So there we go. I better quit. I've been having so much fun. I want to keep playing with you guys and showing you the metallic accents and all the fun stuff. Um, but there we go. So that is the Freebird home decor piece with the stencils, the color bloom too. Get them before they sell out. Some of our dyes and our box flowers. And then the metallic accents, which you've got to have. And let me get you a SKU number on that. It is... It would help if I wasn't upside down, right? 589974. 589974. Okay. Metallic accents, absolutely must have those. And they um, they dry pretty accurate, just a tad bit lighter, I would say, than what you put on there. So I'm going to go ahead and, and save the recording. You guys let me know if you have questions. I have a couple of announcements. Our next Live with Prima is Thursday night. Delena, the rock star, will be there. She has a really cute project. Oh, my gosh. That is 6.30 p.m. Pacific time. And I just have to tell you about our um, brand new planners. It's My Prima Planner. You can go to myprimaplanner.com. You can find My Prima Planner on Facebook or Instagram. We've been showing a couple sneak peeks. We are doing a launch party in California. And if you're able to get there at all, check out our main Facebook page, Prima Marketing Flowers. We have a giveaway on there for two tickets to get into the launch party for free. And just between you and me, it's not just a party to go to and see what they look like. You get to pick out the planner you want when you sign up. So there are details for that at um, livewithprima.com. No, it's on myprimaplanner.com. Sorry. Myprimaplanner.com. There's a registration tab. Um, just click on that if you get lost and can't find it. Um, you can uh, go to our main Facebook page or you can go to My Prima Planner Instagram. We'll be watching our social media in case you have questions, okay? Um, so you do get a planner. It's going to be loads of fun and we're really excited. We have four brand new planners coming out and that launch starts in September. So our retreat is in October and you'll be one of the very, very first to get those planners. All right. Thank you guys so much for coming in today and putting up with all of our playtime and making messes. I really, really loved having you guys. Um, make sure you, you stay tuned. We're going to be doing some Facebook Lives with um, over the next couple weeks, introducing like our classes. I did one today on my personal page. But watch out for um, the instructors. We'll be doing a bit of Facebook Live just to introduce the classes and show you a couple sneak peeks and techniques. Um, it's a really fun venue, I think, because Ustream sometimes doesn't work well for us, right? Um, but Facebook is offering another platform to kind of do some, some live stuff. So we have lots of fun stuff in store for you. So stay tuned, okay? All right, bye-bye.